angels angels everywhere but the problem is we cannot see them but because we cannot see them does it mean that they don't exist find out next on words to inspire you restoration christian ministries presents words to inspire you a time for sharing the things that will bring encouragement to your hearts and enlightenment to your minds inspirational words to keep you focused on the things of the kingdom of god and his christ join us now and enjoy words to inspire you with your host pastor john baysmore hello everyone this is pastor b and i welcome you again to words to inspire you this is the day the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and we are going to be glad in it. Today, everyone, I want to talk about angels. And I want to talk about angels, but before I do, I want to kind of preface something by saying this. Angels are not to be worshipped. So I am not talking about angels in the respect that we should worship them or honor them because of who they are. Not at all. But um, secondly, angels are not to be served we serve God alone angels are servants of God and I'm going to talk more about that in a moment but I wanted to say that because I know sometimes you know we as believers particularly as preachers and pastors we don't like to talk a lot about as I said in one of my previous broadcasts we don't like to talk a lot about heaven though that is the place we are all supposedly are trying to go to we don't want to talk about hell because we're afraid of offending people and we don't want to talk about angels because there's someone that um, we don't or beings that we have not seen I believe most of us believe that there are angels, but because we have not seen them, therefore in our minds, we believe that uh, they may they may not exist. Now, I'm saying in our minds only, not to the point of our faith, but just in the respect that there's not something that we give a lot of thought about because we don't see them. But I want to try to bring today some reality when it comes to uh, things that are spiritual because believers, we live in a natural realm, but the real realm is the spirit realm. That's where we originally came from. And for those of you who may say, well, listen, um, Pastor B, you, you're so... Are heavenly minded that you're no earthly good and in retort I say this that you are so earthly minded that you're no heavenly good because aren't we supposed to be ambassadors here we are not citizens here we are ambassadors on this earth so the Bible says and listen you're an ambassador to the place that you came from which means we represent the place that we came from so we are here believers to represent heaven when we give our lives to the lord jesus christ we're here to represent heaven when i go on a vacation i enjoy the place that i am but i always look forward to going back home because that is the place that i came from so again this is nothing unusual and i don't want you to allow anyone to make you feel a weird or strange because you want to talk about home your home is heaven that is where we originated from that is where prayerfully we're all going to go back to and listen I want to say this as well some people say well I don't believe in talking about angels they're not real to me but now I'm gonna say this if you believe in demons in turn you have to believe in angels and if you believe in angels in turn you have to believe in demons there's always a good and a bad a right and a wrong light and darkness that's just the way that things are set up so now does the bible tell us who angels are what are angels let's start there what are angels well again you guys know me i want to stay right with the word of the lord so let me uh, give you a scripture i believe it's in hebrews uh, 114 let me read it for you that's the best way to start are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation so now they're here to minister or to serve those who would be the heirs of salvation that is us that's what their job is their their job they came from heaven and they're here on this earth to minister though for those of us who are the heirs or who are going to inherit salvation uh, and eternal uh, life with the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in eternity in heaven so now that's what they're here for they're here uh, to minister for us on our behalf they're not here uh, to minister as we tell them now there's a lot of varying beliefs about 
uh, angels and how they operate. But I believe this. I believe angels operate according to our obedience. When we are obedient to the word of God, then they are right there standing by receiving instructions from the Holy Spirit because he is the one that's on this earth now. He is the one that sets up different situations so that they can minister for us. Some people believe that you can direct angels. Whether you believe that or not, I'm I'm not going to get into that type of um that type of uh, argument or that type of um, going back and forth about can we direct them or not. To me, that's not important right now. What's really important is for us to know that they're here to minister for us as the heirs of salvation. Secondly, let me read from Exodus 23, 20. It says this, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in thy way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Now, so what do they hear? What do they do as well? They're here to bring us to the place that God has prepared for us. That's part of their job. That's part of their assignment. Again, we don't see them. You know, uh, most of us don't see them. Now, there are, there are cases, documented cases of people that have actually seen angels. Now, what happens when you see them? Well, that depends on what they're sent for. What were they sent to you for? They don't just show up to say, what's up? That's, it doesn't work that way. When an angel comes and, and manifests himself particularly, they're there for a reason. Do you remember when a, the angel came to um, Mary, uh, the angel Gabriel, to give her a message? They are, they are ministering spirits. They're messengers of God to give her a message. An angel came to um uh, to Moses, an angel came to Abraham, an angel came to Jacob. They they come for a reason. They don't just show up to chill with us. They come because they are ministering spirits. They're here to give a message. Thirdly, uh, I think it's in Psalm 103, 20. It says, bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening into the voice of his word. So now two things here. They are strong. They are, they are supernaturally strong. We have, we have no strength that can compare to them. We are not, we're not even able to be in the same realm as far as what they're able to do. And by saying that, I want to give you an example. Uh, many of you may have heard of this book. I, I read this book years and years ago. It's called Angels on Assignment. Now, one of the things that I've always wondered is what you know what do angels do i mean when when they're because i we also know that they're warring angels now they they fight on our behalf they're messenger messenger angels they're warring angels um that that um that fight on our behalf they're guardian angels so they're all different types of angels but now i always wondered speaking of the strength of angels you know what are they really capable of doing because the bible talks about one angel who slew over 180,000 soldiers so we have no idea what they're capable of doing but getting back to the book angels on assignment uh, in this book I, I was reading where a person by the name of charles buck he had a visitation by angels and um he was asleep one night. He heard his dog barking. Seemingly, dogs have this uh, extra sensory perception where they're able to sense and see things that we are not. But um, they they sensed something was going on, this dog. So uh, the dog started barking. Uh, when uh, he woke up, Charles Buck woke up, he realized that uh, there was a light on downstairs. He thought he had left the light on. When he went downstairs, he, he then got the surprise of his life there were three huge angels that was in his living room and of course you know he said he was completely shook he was uh completely taken he was beside himself and of course he'd never seen anything like that and one of the angels was michael one of the angels was gable gable uh gabriel i'm sorry and then there was another angel i don't remember his name but this angel he began to ask questions and he asked him a question about Jericho. I thought this was fascinating. The story that he told, he said, well, what exactly happened? And this is what the angel said. And again, this is not something that's verifiable. I'm telling you what he said, uh, that the angel said to him, but it makes sense, particularly when you look at uh, historical facts about uh, the walls of Jericho and what was actually found. So here's what he said, that the angels were stationed on top of the walls. Now, you remember I said the angels are willing to um, not just willing, but they're there to uh, minister for us as we obey the commandments of the Lord. Now, 
It's real important that we do what God tells us, instructs us to do, because you don't realize that I didn't realize that the angels are right there. And when we follow the commands of God as they're giving, they're right there. I mean, instantly there to minister on our behalf. So he said they were standing on the wall. And of course, uh, he was waiting for them. Uh, the angels was waiting for them to obey God, you know, to march around the wall six days, one time on the seventh day, march around the wall seven times. When the trumpets blew, he said, this is what happened. The angels were stationed when they had obeyed and they heard the sound of the trumpet. They began to push the walls down into the ground. Now, we've often heard the story of the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Actually, the ruins of that was found of the city found that they actually were pushed down into the ground again, which verifies what this angel said. So it's amazing that they're there. They're not there again to just do our bidding as we tell them to do, but they are there to minister for us as the heirs of salvation. Secondly, I mean, fourthly. Uh, it's in Psalm 91 and 11 says, for he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways. So again, they're there to protect, to defend and to guard us. This is what they're, this is what they're here. I'm not going to say this is what they're there for. This is what they're here for. The angels around me right now. I cannot see them. What love are they just so happen to manifest so you can see them behind me in this broadcast? I know that's not going to happen, but I'm going to tell you a story in, in one sec. As a matter of fact, let me tell you now, you know, um, and I, I told this um, maybe a few months ago on one of my broadcasts when I was talking about things supernatural. And I was talking about um, Darlene and I had a, a, um, a table of promise. And I actually have it uh, behind me, behind this couch behind me. And I keep it there because it's a reminder to me of the things that God has promised. So what I did, I actually took a picture. I was standing in the chair and it's a glass, it's a like a glass top table. And I took a picture uh, of the table now in the corner in the right corner of this glass top uh, there you know there was nothing it was like an empty space everything else was covered with pictures of things that we were believing God for you know homes a car furniture and things of this nature but in this one corner on the right side it was just a, a little small spot maybe I would say maybe four by six that was empty so as I took the picture again uh, I began because I took it with my cell phone so I began to look at the picture and I, you know how you look at a picture and you want to enlarge it because I saw something in the corner. And I was like, what is that? So it seemed like a little flash of light. So as I expanded the picture, lo and behold, the surprise of my life, I saw an angel in that picture. And I still have that picture to this day because it's a reminder to me that there really are spirit beings in this world. So someone said to me, well, how do you know it was an angel? Well, I can't say I know for sure it was an angel, but I believe it was an angel, it was nothing else. I mean, you, so, so I guess somebody said, well, how do you know it wasn't a demon? Stop it, it was not a demon. First of all, demons don't look like it. This, this, you know, this um, being that I believe was an angel, you know, they just, I mean, everything about them. I was, I was reading um, a story. I was actually listening to a video. I, I believe it was by Kat Kerr. And she, uh, she was talking about angels and what they look like. And, you know, because she had seen them. And I looked at this picture that I had taken. And I was looking at one of the pictures of an angel that she had in her book. And I was just completely taken back. So it's not difficult for me. Uh, to believe in angels. I do believe that they're here. I believe that they minister for us. Um, you know, when we're preaching the word, I believe that they're in the audience guarding and protecting the place. I believe that they're on the roof guarding the doors. I, be I believe that they're just there guarding and protecting us as we're ministering the word. The Bible also says this, be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. That's Hebrews 13 and 2. And I, I truly believe this. I do. I believe that angels have the ability uh, to appear as human beings. I believe that there are communities of angels on this earth that we um, may see and not recognize as angels. This is, I've heard story, I've heard numerous stories, and I'm sure that you have. I've heard numerous stories about uh, people who have run into who they believe were angels. And have you ever had a situation where it just, it just seemed 
Um, not what, not that it didn't seem real, but you knew there was something different about that circumstance. So let me tell you about something that happened with me years ago, years and years ago. My wife and I was at a Dunkin' Donut in a Dunkin' Donut in Clifton, New Jersey. It was a Sunday morning. We were, you know, on our way to church. We just started. I uh, decided to stop there to get some coffee and a donut, you know, and to drink drink the coffee and eat the donut before we went to church. And then we were going to go ahead out to church. Well, when I stopped there, um, the wife stayed in the car and I went inside, you know, to pick up some stuff for both of the both of us to bring back to the car. We we're just going to, you know, sit there in the car and, you know, and, you know, eat, consume it and then just get in the car and head on down towards downtown where we were going to, you know, go towards the um, where we were going. So here's what happened. There was this little old, old a little older Caucasian woman, uh, and it, it the whole and I'm saying Caucasian woman for a re, for a reason. This is the reason. You know, I'm from the South, and you you normally don't expect certain things to happen, and in the South you never expect an older Caucasian woman to come up to you and ask you. Uh, with all of these different people in, in the Dunkin' Donuts, most of whom were Caucasian, she walked up to me and asked me, was I headed towards downtown? Now, we were, but we were going to sit in the car for a moment and drink the coffee. So I said, well, yeah, we we eventually going to be going downtown. She said, would you mind giving me a ride? Now, let me stop the presses right here. This completely freaked me out. Let me tell you why. The thought of an older Caucasian woman getting in the back of my car, you know, and me taking her downtown. Now, again, you got to understand, I'm from Virginia, so this is not something that would have happened. So the fact that she would even approach me with everyone else in the restaurant and ask me in particular to give her a ride downtown, I thought was strange. But, you know, being the, you know, nice guy that I am, you know, I said, well, of course, ma'am, I, I would be happy to give you a ride. I said, my wife is in the car. You, and I said that so she could feel safe. She said, oh, it's no, it's okay. It just doesn't matter whether she is or not. And I just said, okay. So when I went to the car, you know, I introduced uh, my wife and I said, well, you know, you can have a seat in the back. And so I just, you know, gave, uh, gave Jan the stuff. And I just said, okay, let me just get in the car and head on towards uh, downtown now. Well, you know, she was, began to ask us, you know, what do we do? And I said, I'm a preacher. She said, oh, well, I believe in God and I love the Lord too. And I said, wow, you know, this, what a coincidence. She said, yes. And she said, and I'm sure that God loves you more than you ever know. And so, you know, I said, well, thank you. You know, not even thinking about why she would say that. So here's the thing. So she said, well, you can pull, we got downtown. She said, you can pull right over here and let me off right over here. I said, okay. So my plan was this to pull over get out of the car, go around, open up the door for us. So I said, okay, give me a second. So I pulled over. So I put the car in park and I went around to open the door for her. There was no one in my back seat. You heard me right. There was no one in my back seat. The door was not open. There was no one in that back seat. Jan and I literally flipped. I, I have never had anything like that before or since to happen to me in my life. What did it tell me? That the reality of angels and the spirit realm, and if they're angels, there's a God. If there's a God, there is a Jesus. I don't care about these ignorant people, and that's what I want to call them, who say there is no God, there is no Jesus. You can believe whatever you like. You know, if you want to take that, if you want to stand, you know, take that stance on God and take that stance on the Lord Jesus Christ to take that stance on the word of God and say the Bible is not real. Jesus is not real. That's your prerogative, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to find out. <laughs> I promise you, we will find out who is right. And I'm not trying to be right. I'm just praying that you don't be wrong, because if I believe the way that I do, I have nothing at all to lose. But you have everything to lose if you truly believe there are no angels, there's no Jesus, there's no God. Well, you know, all I can say is, you know, <laughs> good luck with that. So I want to end here because I may I may have to do another broadcast because I want to talk about some of the other things, some of the other uh, mighty exploits that angels have done. But I wanted to start out just by talking about, you know, who angels are, the reality of angels, the reality of what they're here for. And... Um, and as we go forward, I, I pray that you can, as the word of God says, set your affections 
on things above and not on the things of this earth. This is a command by God. This is not a suggestion, believers. This is a command. We are not from here. We're not from here. It's nice to want to, to live a good life. That is something that God has promised. That's a beautiful thing. It's nice to have nice things, nice home, children, you know, nice job. Those are good things because what you're really doing, you are preparing yourself for eternity because the things that we do here, they, they last throughout eternity prayerfully. You know, only the things that we do for the Lord Jesus Christ are going to last. But now the things that we learn here, you don't get dumb. You know, all of a sudden you go to heaven. You know, you just don't know anything. You remember the things that happen here. You know, the things that happen here, they, they matter. You know, a lot of the things that we do on this earth determine the rewards that we get when we get to heaven. So let me end here. But again, I want to thank you for giving me this time with you. I pray uh, that this word has been a blessing to you, that it has opened your heart and opened your eyes to the things of the spirit realm, to, to the reality of angels. My prayer always, believers, is that the Lord God will bless you real good. And until next week, I love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed and be encouraged. God bless you. Thank you for joining Words to Inspire You with your host, Pastor John Baysmore. Words to Inspire You is a production of Restoration Christian Ministries Incorporated. Teaching the word, living by faith, growing in grace. We thank you for watching this broadcast and pray that you will continue to partner with us. We invite you to join us again for our next program as we present Words to Inspire You, a time of refreshing.